Hello, and welcome to another GibbsCam Tech Tip. Typically, a regular three-axis GibbsCam process will get you what you need within a setup to properly machine your part. However, I think any programmer understands that the devil is in the details in manufacturing. Retracts, clearance planes, and links between passes are just a few of these details that can become time-consuming. Today, I'm going to show you how you can utilize five-axis processes in a three-axis environment to make better toolpaths and reduce your overall programming time. So this toolpath I'm showing you right now is the typical three-axis toolpath, and um, it's an okay toolpath, but there's a couple things that most people wouldn't like about it, namely that, um, you know, it's, it's bouncing in and out of these holes, and it's also retracting um, to the clearance plane. And there are ways to fix this in three axis. I could plug these holes. Um, I could mess around with the, the dialog boxes and stuff like that. But I want to show you how simple it is in five axis to quickly and effectively do this here. So I have a five axis toolpath I've already made, uh, but I try to get it to look as close as possible to what the three axis toolpath look like. So it's still retracting to that same clearance plane, everything like that. <clears throat> so let's take a look at this. Um, first thing I want to point out on the surface pass tab is is really how many different types of processes um, we have um, that are not available in three axis. So you have a lot more flexibility, a lot more things to try if something's not working in three axis. Over on the tool axis control, this is the most important thing. I want to set the output format to three axis. So um, no matter what machine I'm using, um, even if it's only a three axis capable machine, if I put this to three axis, the output of my toolpath and what the post process code uh, puts out will be in a three axis format that any machine, um, any mill should be able to read. Uh, over here, uh, we, have, we have some gouge check things. I'm not gonna dwell too much on this, but I can select fixturing and have it automatically uh, avoid fixturing, tell it what to do when it encounters fixturing, um, but the main thing I want to focus on is the, the link tab over here. So I mentioned before that it's retracting to this clearance plane and it's kind of wasting a lot of time going all the way up to the top um, every single time. So one cool thing that you can do in five axis is actually set a clearance sphere or whatever shape um, better fits your part, right? So if I say, hey, there's a radius of 1.5 and say, okay, let's redo this process here. It no longer is retracting all the way to the clearance plane. So um, when it hits this, this circle, it just goes right up 0.1 off the surface and right back down. Now, you might not even want that. Um, sometimes you don't want you know anything like that. So what I can do is say gaps along cut, I can blend spline, blend spline, uh, or I could do direct. That's a linear move, whereas blend spline is going to be you know a G2 or G3. Um, but let's let's take a look at how that looks. So now uh, it's completely ignoring all of these holes, and that that would have been uh, that would have taken some time in a three-axis environment to to plug those holes and make another model and all that kind of thing. Um, we have a lot of uh, flexibility on lead in, lead out. You can see all the options that we have here. Um, maybe I'm trying to avoid fixturing. Um, maybe I want to get tangential entry so that the finish looks nice. Um, there's many more options um, in five axis that that three axis just doesn't have um, one more thing links between slices um, that's every pass you know it, um, it it goes around a lot of people don't like direct movements like this it, it can give a, a bad finish and also um, it's it can be hard on your tool and machine so you have a lot of options um, i'm going to do blend spline just just like we did before but you have a lot of options on on how your finish is going to come out, how your toolpath is going to come out, and it's really easy to make your toolpaths um, very nice. So um, I didn't have long. Uh, there's a lot more to five axis, but there's just incredible power in five axis that the three axis module just doesn't have. Um, and you can see that I did this in under five minutes. So uh, hopefully you can see from this video that you can use a five axis process to easily control the important details of your toolpaths such as retracts, links, and uh, clearance values. There are even some features that you can use to make a better toolpath that will save you manufacturing and program time. As this is just a short video, I can only show you a small fraction of the ways that using 5-axis instead can help you be more efficient. But if you'd like to know more on this topic, please reach out to your local Gibbs Cam reseller.